Hey there, welcome uh, to the channel. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, one of the things that we've had a lot of trouble with uh, this year, and these pests usually don't bother me that much, but they really have this year, are mosquitoes. And I don't know, as you can see around this property, we have a lot of woods and open areas behind us where there can be standing water and things like that. And lots of places for the mosquitoes uh, to breed. So one of the things that I've seen and remembered seeing a few years ago, and I thought these were, were something new uh, that have recently come out, but they've been around for a while, are the, I think they're calling them the mosquito bucket of doom. And what you're going to need for this uh, project, and we're going to make a couple of them and try them again because they've been so bad uh, this year on our property. Uh, again, they don't bother me that much, but the pesky little devils have been, you know, getting even at me. They bother my uh, wife. Uh, our granddaughter's been coming over some. They, you know, they bother her real bad. And we're just trying to cut down on some of that. But what you're going to need for this project is a five-gallon bucket, and it doesn't have to be any particular bucket, just a five-gallon bucket. Uh, some hardware cloth. A lot of people make these. And because we're going to put water in them and have standing water in them with some other garden debris that ferments, and I'll go over that here in a second, you're going to have an open bucket sitting around somewhere on your property uh, just full of you know water or half full of water. But I really don't want to do that, so I recommend that you have some sort of open hardware cloth or something like this that the mosquito, the adult female mosquitoes can actually fly through to get into the fermenting water that's down in here and you can just fashion this you know to where it'll fit around this bucket and maybe even tack it on there with a couple of screws or something like that to where you know a kid couldn't get in this or maybe an animal if you have any on your property or other critters that you might not want getting in these buckets you know half full or full of water and debris and not being able to get out but what i'm actually going to do is when I got these buckets, I also got lids. So I'm gonna take the lids, and we'll show you this step here in a minute, and I'm actually gonna drill about three to five two inch diameter holes in these lids, just spacing around here. And then when I have my concoction in here and it's ready to go, I'm just gonna snap the lid on. And the idea is, is that the adult female mosquitoes can still fly down in here to the bucket, get down in the water to lay their eggs. And we're going to take mosquito dunks and break these up into quarters and put one in each bucket because these dunks are really designed to cover, I believe it's a hundred square foot of surface water area. And what they do as they dissolve it breaks up the chemical uh, compound in here, and it's the active ingredient is BTI, and I'll put that in the description because uh, I can't really pronounce it that well. But over time, that settles into the surface area of the water, and when the, that adult female mosquito lays her eggs, the larvae or larva hatch, and they eat the BTI, and the BTI gets in their gut, and it kills them, so they can't hatch out and become new. Uh, mosquitoes and you have to replace this about every 30 days in your your bucket so you can put that on your you know reminder calendar or your list of things to do but we're, we're going to try that another option are these mosquito bits that i found and you could also use them uh, in the water uh, dissolve a teaspoonful uh, in the water but we haven't tried them yet don't know how that's going to work but i found them and i thought i would give them a try so what you want to do for your bucket is have some garden debris like I've got in this bucket. And all in the world this is, is just some leftover uh, grass clippings and things like that that I had in my compost that I want to use in these buckets. And it's not necessarily green grass clippings. I've let, let it break down just a little bit first. But we're just going to put some of that in there. I've got some more uh, bigger material that I'm just going to put down in there. Some leafy material that's already started to break down. There's a little bit of green there. And I'm just going to divide that up amongst my two buckets that I'm going to use. 
And again, you don't want to use the, the stuff that you just recently cut off. Let it go ahead and, and die off a little bit and start to break down before you put it in your buckets. But you can see here, it's just a kind of a mixture of, of dead leaves and things like that, grass clippings from my yard. And all I'm going to do then, once I get kind of divided up between the two buckets that I'm going to make, I'm going to make two because you want to kind of set these buckets off in some shady areas on your property to where, you know, it's not necessarily going to be uh, offensive to the immediate area around it and you won't be around it. But it's also going to, when this uh, concoction starts fermenting, it's going to emit CO2. And that's what attracts the mosquitoes. And for you, the CO2 is also what attracts the mosquitoes. So when you're when you're emitting CO2, uh, that's what they're attracted to. But for getting these buckets ready, we're going to go ahead and fill these about half full of water for now. And I'm going to set them out on my driveway in the hot sun because you want them to start fermenting and sit there and concoct for about three days before you actually add your dunk. So we're going to go ahead and add the water, let them sit out here for three to five days in the hot sun and start cooking. And then we're going to uh, break our dunks into quarters and put those in here and snap on our lids and we'll set these out on the property. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and do the water. And that's really about half full or so, and this will continue to break down a little bit. But you want there to be some surface water here. For those adult females to actually be able to get down into and land in here and lay their eggs. So you don't want it just to be so, you know, compact and intense with this debris uh, that they can't get into the actual water, but that's what's going to attract them. So I think we're going to let that uh, go just like it is and see how it ferments down in just a couple of days. But that's about half full, I think. You know, just a couple to three gallons of water maybe in the five gallon bucket. And I've also seen some people that don't uh, don't recommend using a you know a screen or hardware cloth or a lid. They're just going to set them out and leave them open on their property, and and that's fine if you have an area that you can safely do that in. But they'll take a stick and just lay down in the bucket to where if you know something uh, does get in there, maybe one of your pollinators or something that does get in there can have a way to uh, you know crawl out or escape out. If it does get in the bucket, because the book, the sides of these buckets are slick, and if they get in there, they can't normally get out. But that would give them an escape method to get out of there. And the BTI doesn't uh, doesn't bother uh, your pollinators and, and things like that. And you can even put these mosquito dunks in fish ponds and, and areas like that. Uh, maybe you have ornamental fish or something like that that you don't want to you know, the BTI to bother. It doesn't bother them. It's just the mosquitoes that it bothers. But we're going to take these again now and just set them out in our driveway to where they'll be in the hot sun and start cooking. And we're going to leave them for three to five days. And I'm just going to set them out here and just let them cook. What I'm going to do now is uh, show you how I'm going to do the holes in the lids of the buckets that we are going to use on them. Okay, what I'm going to uh, do next is go ahead and drill our holes with our uh, two-inch hole saw. And if you don't have a hole saw like this, you can just get a, a drill bit and drill some holes and, you know, cut them out with a hacksaw if you have one. Uh, and even if you're careful, you can, you know, cut the holes out in these uh, lids with just a, a knife or a razor blade or something like that that you have. Just, you know, just be careful. And we'll do that here in a second. But another thing that we have that I might try to use, and it has fairly good size holes in it, uh, is a compost sifter uh, that we have. And we have another video of that where we've used that at. But it fits in these five-gallon buckets perfect. And we could just set that on the top of one of the buckets and, and try that out and see how it works. Or maybe you could invert it and just have it attached with a couple of zip ties or something like that. But that's another... And for this process, I prefer to wear my safety glasses, but I'm just going to put my bucket lid on this one and just pick a couple of uh, three places and go ahead and drill out the holes. I'm 
like that. where the adult female mosquitoes can get down in here, lay their eggs, and from what I understand, they'll still leave the area, but that leaves the larva behind to hatch out, and they'll stay in that water and eat the BTI, so. And you might check around, you know, your big box stores have these buckets for sale. Uh, we found these at a local uh, sub shop in our area that we really like. And I always love to plug them. They're not sponsoring this or anything, but I always love to plug them. It's Firehouse Subs. They uh, get these uh, buckets full of pickles, uh, use them up, and then they sell the bucket and the lid for three bucks, which is a hard to beat price in my opinion. And the proceeds go back to the local uh, first responders in the area. So that's kind of why we like supporting them. Just at least touting their, their empty bucket program. And we use these buckets for a lot of other things around our property for compost, debris, for cutting clippings and trash cans and things like that out on our property. I don't have that one down on there good. That's why I'm not able to keep it in place. Okay, well that's pretty much it. We've got our lids drilled. Uh, we've got our concoction uh, setting out in the, the buckets on the driveway for so they can get in the hot sun. Maybe check back with us in uh, three to five days. We'll do the update at the end of this video and show you how the concoction uh, looks. We'll add our uh, chunks of mosquito dunks and then we'll deploy the buckets and uh, see how they do. So we're back, it's been about four days. Uh, we've been making our concoction in our mosquito buckets. We put all of our uh, grass clippings and other yard debris in there and some water and just let it stand out in the uh, hot sun and get it to ferment. And then uh, let me tell you, this stuff is really stinking. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and add the uh, mosquito dunks to each of these buckets. They're about two-thirds of the way full of water, and we're going to put a quarter of one of these tabs in each bucket. And that's what these are. And we're just going to float them in the top in the water and let them sit there. And then we're going to take our lids uh, that we cut the holes out in with a, a drill, a hole saw, and we're just going to snap those in place. And then we're going to deploy the buckets uh, to two opposite corners of this property and just kind of put them in an out of the way place and let them sit there. Where do you where do you think back here? Anywhere special? Maybe maybe out of sight, out of mind. Whew. Stinky. All right, so we're going to give that a try, and we're also going to put a note uh, in my calendar for thirty days because you're supposed to add uh, more of the the BTI dunks after thirty days. And we'll check it once or twice throughout the month because, you know, like this week, I think we're, this week or next week, maybe we're expecting uh, one or two hundred degree plus days uh, here in North Texas. So 
we want to make sure that all the water doesn't evaporate out of there.